Today, we're going to be comparing and contrasting Infinity Kingdom with Rise of Kingdoms. Now, this is a video that you guys have been asking for a ton. People have been mentioning in the comments section asking me which game is better or which game is free to more free to play friendly or how do these games differ from one another because if you've never played either of them then i can see how from the outside looking in they may look very similar and they are the similar genre but i think ultimately once you get into both games you'll see that they are pretty different before we move any further i know a lot of you guys on my channel have played or at least tried rise of kingdoms and if you're ready to try infinity kingdom there will be a link down in the description below the game is free and downloading with my link does support the channel for free okay with that out of the way the first thing we're going to do is compare immortals to commanders okay immortals are these special characters that bring your troops into battle they're the ones that allow you to deal damage with the troops that you've been training and as you can see here merlin has three different uh, attributes down here he has the type of unit he brings into battle he has the element that he is he himself is and he also has his position on the battlefield you can see on the right here he has seven of these red gems these are essentially his star level if you're familiar with rise of kingdoms beneath that the power of the immortal the equipment that you can put on this immortal you can see here that i have four equipment slots and then at the very bottom you can see that he has four skills now we're going to talk a little bit about skills later but what's most important to understand and that's a big difference between infinity kingdom and rise of kingdoms is that in infinity kingdom a particular immortal only has one unique skill to them if i take a look at charles the great here you can see that he has a single skill called terra shield and i haven't filled out the other three skill slots these additional skill slots are unlocked by adding more gems over in the top corner just like in rise of kingdoms when you add a new star level to a commander they unlock a new skill up to four skills and then at the very end there's an expertise once you've completely developed your mortal to maximum level here and you have them at least level 30 then you can spend some more of your fragments to unlock the artifact slots and that's a little bit different than rise of kingdoms so we're looking at skills we're looking at troop types right these are all things that are very similar we're looking at equipment uh, but the way that you build your troops uh, and, and that you build your armies is actually quite different in rise of kingdoms you have a primary commander and you have a secondary commander in infinity kingdom you have a front row and a back row composed of four immortals and then in the very back you have a dragon now in rise of kingdoms typically you want to synergize with troop types so if you have a cavalry primary commander typically you want to have a cavalry secondary commander and then fill that with all cavalry in this instance each immortal has their own troop type that they bring to the battlefield so you're always going to have mixed troops except for the back row which is always going to have bowmen because of these deal damage at range what you're synergizing for instead in infinity kingdom is the element right so you can see here if you look at these little water drops you can see all five of the components of this army are all the water elements and if I tap here, you can see that if you have three, four or five different units of the same element at the same time, you gain extra bonuses either to your physical defense, magical defense, attack, physical attack, whatever, troop HP, all that stuff. Right. And this will make a lot more sense when I show you later how war is actually waged in infinity kingdom, because it's not the same open field fighting that you would see in rise of kingdom. So keep that in mind. Okay. So we understand that immortals and commanders serve a similar function in that those are what you use to bring your troops to the battlefield they have equipment all that stuff let's talk about skills now because this is one of the key differences between infinity kingdom and rise of kingdoms okay as you can see merlin has a primary skill called prophecy this says that it deals damage to all enemy targets so this is an aoe with a particular damage rate you can see here that i have three other skills we have fire nova we have toxin nova and we have concentration uh, and these skills all have a level now the level of your first skill depends depends on how many of the develop how much development you have in that immortal so here you can see he's fully developed and therefore this skill is at eight and I think at three and at five and then again at seven that's when you unlock the second third and fourth skill now Merlin is an epic immortal so you can see that he is the highest rarity he's got the golden plaque here if we scroll down you can see somebody like Joan of Arc uh has the has the purple emblem here she is an elite immortal and then we can go down and you can see that there are greens and blues as well so one thing that you'll notice is that Joan of Arc only has three skill slots and that's one of the big differences between um you know the epics and the elites obviously the epics are a little bit more powerful and they can have a whole additional skill 
just like in rise of kingdoms where if you have uh, let's say a blue commander uh, they just don't have an expertise right so it's a similar concept here now where these additional skills come from is from a building in your city called the tower of knowledge the tower of knowledge is actually a place where you can go and invest in particular skills and then what you do with that skill is up to you so for example we can see here the fire nova skill that i have on my merlin i could just as easily equip this to some or any other immortal if I want to what's important though is to come up with some sort of synergy right so this is dealing magical damage over time so ideally you could put this skill on anybody but you would want to put it on an immortal that deals a lot of magical damage and as you can see here based on the attributes you can see the magical attack is quite high here for Merlin whereas if I take a look at somebody like Yoshitsune uh his magical attack magic attack is much lower despite also being a fully developed epic immortal so you can see that each immortal has a bit of a difference in what they're good at so understanding that is the key to understanding which skills are good with which immortals and this is something that the top tier players are constantly debating now one advantage that i think that infinity kingdom has over rise of kingdoms is that not only does you know if you invest in a skill and you put it on an immortal that you think uh, later down the line you find out is a weak immortal you can then just take that skill and move it to a new immortal and it continues to retain its level so you can see here my toxin nova is level eight uh, and I can put this on any immortal I want and it's going to be level eight so my investment in that skill uh, will stay there now you also can invest in skills in the tower of knowledge that maybe aren't that great right maybe they're just not meta they're not that powerful uh, and the good news is that um, in infinity kingdom you can actually get back the soul crystals that you invest to make that skill powerful so you can see here if I want to upgrade my Garot uh to level seven it costs 28,800 soul crystals you can see my total on the top here uh and if I want to instead get everything back I can actually hit this little red um this little red circle here and it'll give me back 80 percent of the soul crystals that I've spent so there's a small penalty for doing so um, but you then get back a universal material that I can not only use to invest in a different skill but I can also use those soul crystals to go into the market and invest in fragments of immortals so this is a sort of universal currency that you can use to develop your account in multiple different ways uh, the same can be true for immortals so let's say for example you invest in an immortal that you don't think is very powerful so in my instance we can take a look here these are some immortals that i've invested in that i currently am not using in a army setup so we can take a look at uh this is julius caesar here right if i wanted to if i decided that my investment in julius caesar was a bad investment i can reborn this immortal get back all of the fragments that i that i put into this immortal get back all of the gold and everything that i used to develop this immortal as well as all of the experience that i've put into them and then i can use this on somebody else right and those fragments that I get from reborning them I can then dismantle into soul fragments you can see here the soul crystals here um if I'm getting rid of the Palio fragments and the John Z Ziska fragments uh, I get 75 of this universal these are very low rarity so they're not, they're not really like worth anything um but that's something that you could do for example if I go ahead and uh let's unlock my Gilgamesh right if I go ahead and put all 78 of my Gilgamesh here and I refine that you're going to see a ton of these soul crystals come back to me right which is really important so that's one advantage that I think that Infinity Kingdom has is that um if you make a mistake and you invest in the wrong skills or the or the wrong you know immortals you can always undo that and maybe you know there might be a slight penalty um but you can still do that and you know if we take a look at Rise of Kingdoms for example if you invest in a particular commander and you put a bunch of skill points into them there's really nothing that you can do when they're expertise right there's nothing there's no way to get your value back from that commander now they did implement like skill resets and things like that for commanders that maybe you haven't maxed out yet and you only want certain skill points in certain areas they've also introduced skill lock features and things and ways to navigate this system but realistically in rise of kingdoms when you make that investment that's it and you are done the good part about rise of kingdoms um, is that once you make the investment you don't have to worry about anything else right like once you max a commander that's it you don't have to then worry about what skills do I want to put on them right um so in infinity kingdom you you're, you sort of have more freedom to do what what you want um but it, it also adds a little bit of an extra layer of of complexity right so I think that's kind of where you have to draw the line of what you prefer as a player do you prefer the simplicity of just 
picking a commander and investing in it and then hoping that they stay good forever or in infinity kingdom learning the different skills the different pairings the different matchups and everything and then investing in the ones that you think are good and then you can always tweak it a little bit later if you want to the next thing i want to talk about is the graphics and the sound i think that this is pretty clearly uh, an advantage that infinity kingdom has and i know that i've said many advantages to infinity kingdom so far in the video um, but we will talk about a little bit later some i think things that make uh, that that rise of kingdoms has as an advantage to infinity kingdom depending on the type of player that you are so you can see here this is merlin and he's a full 3d model he is a full 3d render and this is the case for every single immortal in the game no matter which immortal it is you look at them they have an animation and they are fully 3d rendered and they look absolutely incredible right their cloak sways when you move them around this is attila right and so i think the graphics are obviously far superior in infinity kingdom i mean the entire kingdom is three dimensional like you can literally get a 3d perspective of everything here one of the things that you lose in exchange for this is that you can't put your buildings wherever you want right in rise of kingdoms you have your kingdom on a sort of grid right or not your kingdom but like your city is on a grid and you can design the city however you want i can move my farm into a different location in my city and ultimately you can make this look sort of however you want with the road systems and all that stuff so rise of kingdoms a little bit more customizable with how you want it to look infinity kingdom actually looking better like actual better graphics that you can see even if we go out into the open world and we look at the world map uh the world map here just looks better i mean you can see the there's like leaves there's sun rays that are shining over here in the corner there's birds in the trees like the game just looks better it just does you can zoom in and out uh it has a similar um infinite zoom feature as rise of kingdoms you can even go into the entire world map and take a look at all of this here right now one thing that i want to take a look at and one thing that i want to point out with this map is that obviously this entire thing is painted red right so that means the different the red faction has completely taken over the entirety of the map that fraction power is super super high okay so in infinity kingdom uh the map is controlled by capturing what are called cities so if we can take a look here we can zoom in and this is a city you siege these cities with your alliance members or different members of your faction ideally uh and that is basically how you're going to capture this city and claim that zone for your alliance and that will turn it whatever color your alliance actually is in this case Ruslan is red and they've taken over pretty much the entirety of the map except for these two cities here that blue owns in rise of kingdoms this is a little bit different because you can see that the territory is built with a flagging system uh this system has been implemented into infinity kingdom in their kingdom versus kingdom game mode right where there are actual thermal towers that function in a similar way to flagging um but for the most part the home kingdom in rise of kingdoms is uh territoried by alliances building flags whereas in infinity kingdom it's built by just capturing cities that already exist there and those cities will then provide you certain buffs so you're going to get here you can see 5,000 uh, iron per hour. You also get a wood production speed and a gathering speed of 50% if your city is gathering within that territory. So that is a nice little bonus. So the way that the map is captured and it controlled is a little bit different. Um, but ultimately, we went on a little bit of a tangent there. We were talking mainly about graphics and sound. I think that the sound design in both games is very similar. I do think both games have very beautiful music and satisfying sound effects. I think that some of the music in Infinity Kingdom is slightly more relaxing. Um, but either way, I think, you know, at that point, we're sort of just nitpicking. I think both games perform, you know, really, really well in that regard. Um, a lot of players play these games with sound turned off because there are a lot of repeating sounds and, you know, you getting attacked and there's all this stuff going on and you just want it to be quiet. So, you know, for a lot of players, I don't think that'll really matter too much, but for those of you that do care, I think both games are very comparable in that regard. Now, the equipment system here in infinity kingdom is a lot less complicated than it is in rise of kingdoms. As you can see here, there's only four pieces of equipment that you have to worry about. You have a weapon, you have a helmet, you have a sort of like a chest piece or a cloak and then you have an accessory and that's it there's four pieces and that is it uh there's nothing that you have to craft with these um you just have to get lucky that you get them as a drop so for example if i go out into the world map uh, and you can take a look here and we'll, we'll find like some of the gnomes, for example, uh, the gnomes are essentially the equivalent to barbarians in, in, uh, in rise of kingdoms. 
but here there's a gnome this is a rogue and you can see that i get different uh, experience and there's a chance that it drops some uh rarity of uh you know a weapon or of a this is an accessory right yes uncommon accessory now obviously the higher the level of the rogue this is level seven so he drops greens but if you defeat higher level gnomes you're gonna have a chance of getting higher rarity weapons and different equipment so that is primarily how you're gonna get equipment here in infinity kingdom there are some bundles that do give you um special equipment like this vip bundle gives you the abuzi bow so this is just a full epic bow that you get by purchasing this bundle so there are different ways that you can come across equipment uh, but primarily for a majority of the game you're going to be getting them from defeating the gnomes in rise of kingdoms it's a bit different obviously you have a bunch of different pieces that you can craft with materials as long as you have enough blueprints to do so and it gets a little bit more complicated than that as well because there's different pieces for the same type so for example the sacred grips and the van braces of eternal empire they are both the same rarity and they both buff infantry tree but they do slightly different things so there's it's a little bit more complex you have to know which pieces are worth it uh and of course you can dismantle them if you don't want them later down the line however there's a huge penalty of doing so in infinity kingdom there's pretty much one uh, piece of equipment for that uh slot right there um once you get into the epic rarity I do think that there's a little bit more variation but ultimately there's no forging or anything like that for equipment in Infinity Kingdom you just you know if you get that piece great if not then what you can do is you can go into the alchemy lab which we've looked at this before uh, and you can dismantle the equipment so if there's a piece of equipment that you don't want you can get green equipment crystals and here you can see if I dismantle the dragon slayer horn helmet I get 120 which isn't that much uh, but this is sort of a universal crystal that you can use to level up your equipment okay and that's sort of a, a difference from Infinity Kingdom to Rise of Kingdoms um, you can see my equipment here is level 25 across the board for my Merlin uh, and each you know each level you strengthen with that universal crystal so if you're grinding trying to get a particular piece of equipment and it's not dropping the good news is that the equipment that you are getting that you know useless uh, as though it may be um you can at least dismantle it for a universal crystal that you can then use to invest in your equipment when you eventually do get it now there is a forge in infinity kingdom and there are materials that you can get to forge specific items and that is for your artifact slot here so this is sort of a very end game optimization for your immortals that you really only worry about much later into the game and just like everything else in infinity kingdom these are full 3d renders which i think look really really cool you can see here that they have different attributes here there's a chance to obtain the special attributes right otherwise they have a basic attribute of randomly adding primary and secondary attribute points so again there are there's something similar to the way that rise of kingdoms has equipment uh, but this is a single piece or your immortal that you worry about at the very end of the game when it comes to events this is something that I think both games do extremely well um both games have a ton of events that come around all the time and they're constantly adding new events to both Infinity Kingdom and Rise of Kingdoms and I think that's what makes both of these games so successful at, at keeping players engaged right there's constantly new things happening Infinity Kingdom has daily sign-in bonuses and rewards that you get just from signing in here you can see I've been a bad boy and I did miss a couple of these days but there are plenty of events and a calendar to go with it so you can see what the upcoming events are and you know there's just tons of stuff always happening in these games um, both games have similar events right obviously rise of kingdoms was released before infinity kingdom so if you do play infinity kingdom you'll notice some of these events have a similar theme to them they're not exactly the same but for example there is a lucky spin uh, event here in infinity kingdom which is similar to the wheel of fortune event in rise of kingdoms in that you do get some nice rewards and fragments of immortals so there's always stuff to look forward to right here at prosperous life if you collect a specific number of resources during the event you'll be able to receive corresponding mission rewards so there's a lot of stuff to do in both games and i think this is again a strength of both games i've played other city builder games in the past that are really beautiful at first but then once you get all the way up to like max level there's just nothing to do right and for example you know the legion of frostborn event just came out in infinity kingdom that's the kvk event they also have the well of time which is similar to the campaign in rise of kingdoms the illusion battlefield is similar to arc of osiris that rise of kingdoms has and this comes around periodically as well infinity kingdom has the mysterium which is similar to the golden kingdom event in rise of kingdoms although there's no fog here you can just pick the path that you want to go 
and you can actually play this uh game mode all the time it's just in your city it's located here whereas in rise of kingdoms you actually have to wait for that event to come around so there's nice rewards that can be had by playing the mysterium as well so as you can see there's tons of events in both games and you really don't have to worry too much about uh being bored <laughs> there's also holiday events and holiday bundles in both games and we'll talk about monetization in a little bit but I also want to talk quickly about the building and research here in Infinity Kingdom because that's obviously um the core gameplay at the beginning of the game so as you can see you can go all the way up to level 40 with your buildings so in rise of kingdoms it is 25. um this may sound scary like oh my god there's way more in infinity kingdom uh, but it's a little bit you know i think it's a similar amount of time i would say it's, it takes a similar amount of time to get to level 40 in infinity kingdom as it would to get to level 25 in rise of kingdoms so don't be so uh don't be so worried about this it's not like there's way more that you have to work towards i think it's similar there's just more levels right so you're, you're it's broken up into smaller steps um there's also the academy which you can research while upgrading which is really cool i like that i, I wish rise of kingdoms would do that uh but anyway the academy is broken down into four different branches in rise of kingdoms it is broken down into two just for clarification if you maybe don't play rise of kingdoms this is what the different levels look like for the city hall in rise of kingdoms uh and then if you come down here into your academy you can see that there's economic and there is military so they both have the same sort of uh setup here in terms of a branching tree uh technology system the production is similar to your economic technology in rise of kingdoms so this is something you want to focus on early game because it's going to give you faster construction speed and more resources troops are going to be for your specific units um different from rise of kingdoms is that this is not how you're going to unlock a higher tier of troop right so in rise of kingdoms you unlock tier two units tier three units all the way up to tier five units from your research here in infinity kingdom you unlock different tiers of troops by upgrading their corresponding building there's cavalry spearmen bowmen and shieldmen as you can see here every 10 levels you unlock a new tier of unit um so at level 10 you unlock tier 2 at level 20 you unlock tier 3 at level 30 you unlock tier 4 and at level 40 at the last level you unlock tier 5 which would be royal shieldmen so you can take a look in the barracks here if we go to train you can see that each of the different troop types are fully 3d rendered everything looks incredible here in infinity kingdom uh, and as you go up the ranks they get more and more badass looking in tier tier five um this is what uh the, the tier five royal shieldmen look like which are super badass now the troops function similarly to rise of kingdoms where the cavalry beat the shieldmen and the shieldmen beat the spearmen and the spearmen beat the cavalry uh and then in the middle is just bowmen who don't beat any troop type but aren't beaten either um and this is a similar functionality to the attribute system so same sort of thing here water beats fire fire beats wind wind beats lightning and this reminds me similar to like a rock paper scissor or like a Pokemon type of uh system so there's two types of systems here um in you know in Infinity Kingdom when you're building your army you know a certain army is going to counter in potentially one or two different ways so it's a little bit more complex when it comes to army building in Infinity Kingdom because you have so many different choices but where it gets a little bit more simple is how the actual battles are taking place so I mentioned before that the actual fighting is a a little bit more streamlined here in infinity kingdom if i want to attack this rogue i can expend some amount of points to do so these are your action points you can see i have a ton of them right so we're going to come over here and my army is going to come and attack this uh gnome out in the open field you can see some amount of time passes to deal damage and then the result of the battle happens at the end so you can see here i was victorious i took no deaths uh you can get dead troops from defeating the pve content in this game but it's not that big of a deal um so here you can see I did get double rewards because there's an event going on I gained experience for my immortals that attacked uh, but what you noticed is that I didn't bring a army out into the open field right I can't just take my army and put them right here in the in, in the open field I, it's just not something that you can do in Infinity Kingdom what you do is you build your army and you send them to attack something and then they attack it and then you get the results of that attack when they come back to your city whether you win or whether you lose um you will see the results at the end there so 
while it's a little bit more complex to build your troop and there's a little bit maybe a little bit more strategy that goes into building your army um in rise of kingdoms obviously you have free movement out in the open fields um so you put your two commanders into your army with whatever troops that you have and then you can move them around in the open fields however you wish right so here we can see my Gaius is uh is gathering but I, if I wanted to I could just move him around and I can just put him right in the middle of the open field uh, and I think this is a feature that players that really draws players to rise of kingdoms and what sort of sets rise of kingdoms apart um and so you can start to attack something and then in the middle of the attack you can just stop attacking if you wanted to right uh this is also how like aoe damage is dealt in rise of kingdoms whereas in infinity kingdom um the aoe damage is dealt within this particular battle so if we were to go back into my mail here we can see the details and we can actually replay that battle right and so even though for us it just looked like a little blip on the screen you know we just attacked them they got defeated this is actually what took place in those two seconds that there was an attack happening right you can see my troops on the left um coming in just dealing crazy damage my dragon wipes them out right and obviously this was a super weak gnome and, and my army is way more powerful than this gnome um but you can see you can actually go in and see the battle that was happening uh and that damage that my dragon dealt was dealt to all the different units there and that's how aoe is sort of dealt here um in infinity kingdom now if you want to attack something uh, another player for example you can attack or you can rally um and the amount of time it takes to do so is the amount of time it takes to march there you can of course teleport your city around the map you can relocate in two different ways um there's a free way to do it which takes time and you could do that up to 300 kilometers or you can just teleport instantaneously and that costs a teleport so the movement and the open field fighting is much different in infinity kingdom uh and some players appreciate that and other games use this system like lords of mobile for example it's a much simpler system you build your army and then you send them out to attack and damage is dealt you win or you lose and then you readjust your strategy accordingly rise of kingdoms you have to manage your army at all times so you have to constantly be online you have to constantly be watching your marches out in the open field you can't just send them out to do something and then go back to your city like you have to be watching it at all times so uh, some players like that more some players prefer the simplicity of uh, the the fighting system in a game like infinity kingdom it's just up to you what you prefer next let's talk about monetization strategy now both of these games are free to play right and you can play them forever and you'll never have to spend a dime as you can see there are daily deals there is a growth fund there are special bundles there are holiday events right so they have very similar monetization strategies and i think that's one thing that you should go into knowing and understanding when starting these games now which one is more free to play friendly i would argue that's you know obviously again and i want to make this clear they have the same monetization strategies but i think that right now at this point in time i think that infinity kingdom is slightly more free to play friendly um it is a newer game and i think that just in general newer games tend to be more free to play friendly than some of their older counterparts that are maybe in more of a sustain mode right they're just keeping their player base whereas infinity kingdom i think is still in maybe their growth phase but regardless uh, i think that the reason that it's slightly more free to play friendly is because there is a number a limit to the number of troops that you can have in your city you cannot infinitely train troops in infinity kingdom whereas in rise of kingdoms you can train troops forever you can have an unlimited number of troops in your city there's no cap in infinity kingdom that is not the case there is a cap to the number of troops that you can have additionally like i said before you can get fragments of immortals and you know dismantle them and turn them into a universal crystal that you can then use to buy different fragments of other immortals so for example in the market you know if i'm working on a particular um element right if i want a water team uh, and i end up getting a ton of let's say fire immortals from just random summoning here then you know let's say i go ahead and do a nine summon and we'll skip that you can see here that i'm not going to use arminius right so now that i've gotten arminius is that a waste no because i can actually go in and i can dismantle them and i can get uh the crystals back for that summon right so that's one thing that i think is a bit more free to play friendly in infinity kingdom there are many ways that you can redirect your resources and and focus it down onto a single thing whereas in rise of kingdoms for example if you do a gold uh, gold key opening and you get some uh you know heads of, of of commanders that you don't use or that you don't need 
well great news there's nothing you could do with them you can donate them during like uh you know a past glory event or something like that uh and you know you can maybe get a handful of limited heads in exchange but ultimately there's really you're going to be sitting on a surplus of them forever right so um that's sort of one of the things that i think is beneficial to infinity kingdom um and just another way that i think it's slightly more free to play friendly than rise of kingdoms but again i do want to keep you know keep you guys and be honest with you guys they do have the same sort of monetization strategy as you can see here some of the bundles do go uh upwards of a hundred dollars right and I, i've never seen a bundle higher than 100 us dollars in either game um so yeah just keep that in mind uh, and just like rise of kingdoms there are some immortals here that you can only get by making a purchase so for example charles the great uh or genghis khan right or elizabeth bathory these are commanders i'm sorry immortals that you can only get um, by making purchases by buying the immortal specifically so both games uh have that same sort of i guess for some of you that's a pro for many of you that might be a con um so keep that in mind right i think at the end of the day they're very similar in monetization strategies with infinity kingdom having a slight edge all right so that was a long video i did not expect it to be that long but hopefully if you guys have never played infinity kingdom before but you have played rise of kingdoms hopefully this video sort of breaks down uh, and compares and contrasts a lot of the key aspects of both games if you found this video useful or informative first and foremost if you haven't played infinity kingdom yet download it with the link in the description below it helps out my channel it's free go ahead and give the game a try also while you're down there subscribe to the channel if you're new here click the bell to be notified the next time that I upload an infinity kingdom video and most importantly drop a thumbs up on the video uh, it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms and infinity kingdom players can see it and compare and contrast uh, both games comment down below what you think about infinity kingdom versus rise of kingdoms which game do you think does certain things better than others I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace